Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Gabby and you're obviously clicked onto my second trimester video. So let's just get straight into it because I have lots of symptoms and things that I wanted to discuss about my second trimester. I am currently 27 weeks and one day. <laughs> There's a lot of debate whether um, like I've seen lots of different conflicting things about when the third trimester starts. I've seen some things that say it starts at 27 weeks and I've seen something, some things that say it starts at the end of 27 weeks. So like when you start 28 weeks. So either way, pretty much at the end, or if not, I am at the end of my second trimester. Also, if you are pregnant as well, congratulations and let's enjoy this journey together <laughs> um, drop down below when you are due your due date and how you found out you were pregnant because I'd love to read those comments all right let's just get straight into it so I started writing some notes from about week 17 but as a general idea for my whole second trimester I'll just recap like the main themes of like what I felt and things like that so the main things that I that started for me was I had um, pelvic girdle pain. So I had a lot of like back pain um, around my hips, uh, at the front of the belly, like down here. So basically the main things that I felt in um, second trimester was pelvic girdle pain, which is like your hips, your back, like pretty much everywhere where your pelvis is, like at the front um, of your uterus uh, it's like stretching pain and things like that that's like the main thing that happens in, in the second trimester and i had that like pretty bad um i still get it um the other things that started like the main thing is uh heartburn so if the wife's ta wife's tales are true then this baby might have a lot of hair <laughs> that's what they all say is that oh it means that you know your baby has a lot of hair so we will see but um those are the two main things that have happened. So I'll go week by week like the same as I did for my first trimester video. And if you haven't seen my first trimester video, I will leave a little card up the top. I think it's on this side or this side about um, that. And you can go check that video out for me. So from week 17, I started to feel little kicks and things, but they were very like butterfly kicks still. Um, they weren't like as they are now, but at that time I was like, oh my God, he's kicking. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, I wrote that it's so hard to describe the feeling, but it's like a little dance party inside a hall or little whooshing around kind of like a heartbeat. So now that I'm like feeling more and looking back, I'm not sure if what I was feeling was the, like, I don't actually know if this is true, but what it feels like to me is like after I eat, I feel like this like pulsating and I think that it's like the um, placenta pulsating like the food like nutrition going into the baby so it happens like every time after I eat so I think that's what that is it's like this pulsating feeling like like the placenta is doing its job and it's taking the food that you're eating and giving it to the baby basically um, that's what I felt a lot in the 17 week 17 um and i still feel it now but i also feel now kicks as well um i also graduated from university around this time i can't remember if it was week 17 or week 18 um so yeah i'll pop in a little picture of that and um around week 20 was when we went for our um big scan that was the last scan that i did and that's also like the scan where you find out the gender. So we were like so excited for that, obviously. Uh, and during the scan, like the lady was having a lot of trouble like trying to see him because he was like rolled over, had like basically his back, um, like his face to my back. So his back was where the scanning was. So she had to like really try and like see everything. But, um, it took like 45 minutes to do that scan honestly but in the end we got there and we did it um 
And then in week 20, I also started getting my appetite back a little bit. I started getting um, a little bit more hungry um, throughout the day. Um, week 21 is when we had our gender reveal party and when we found out the gender that it was a boy we were so excited and it, yeah we knew it was a boy like from the beginning like I had just had a feeling it was a boy but I started like doubting myself and like getting second second what is it second thoughts I've forgotten what it's called baby brain <laughs> second guessing second guessing myself <laughs> um but yeah like from the beginning like since I like did the test and like spoke to my partner I was like I feel like it's a boy I feel like it's a boy I feel like it's a boy and he was like I feel like it's a boy especially when he had a dream of a boy he was like it's a boy um and then I just started yeah like I had a dream of a girl so I thought it was a girl but um yeah I kept like flipping back and forth I was like oh no no it's a boy again and then I'd be like oh but like a little girl would be like you know cute to like put little bows and things on it and I don't know like a little girl would be nice to have every I think every mum always wants like a little girl just to you know be like her best little friend um but I knew it was a boy <laughs> and I'm so glad it's a boy it's like exactly what I need and not necessarily like I'm happy either way but I feel like I always pictured myself as a girl mum but like God knows best and he knows what I need and what my partner needs and yeah my partner needs a boy for sure like I just know that that's what is needed in his life is a little boy that he can raise the way he wants always wanted to be raised and um yeah, I think it's going to be a challenge raising a boy because I have never had a little boy in my life at all. Like, I'm one of three girls. All my cousins growing up were girls. And then as I got older, we had, like, little boy cousins, but I didn't get to see them as much. Um, so I've always been around girls. <laughs> Just always, my whole life I've been around girls. So it's going to be interesting having a boy and, like just learning something different I'm really excited but that's that my little spill on having a boy oh and then week 22 came around and that's when I just had like this like energy of like nesting it was just like a first little like hit of nesting where I just like went and wanted to organize everything I, we went and bought this um, <laughs> I'll move this side this from Ikea so that we can put all of the baby's things in there because we're going to be living in this apartment for the first like month, two months of when baby is here um, and he's obviously going to be in our bedroom so I wanted to like organize things and like some gifts that we got from our gender reveal I wanted to like put them somewhere because I had like nowhere to put them so I just started like nesting and trying to prepare everything and that was fun and also because like finally we knew we were having a boy so I was like we're going shopping and buying some boy clothes because like finally like know the gender and we can finally purchase some things because we've been like waiting 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 to find out to really buy anything because like you know and yeah so that was around week 22 so much fun honestly I love shopping for all the baby stuff I love it I love it week 23 now week 23 is when my heartburn started and it was like if I lay down after eating or just like like we would eat dinner and then like sit on the couch or whatever and kind of like lay to the side I'd start getting heartburn and it honestly like <laughs> it sucks like it feels like the food is coming back up it feels like burning here you feel like acidic acidic -y? acidity like whatever you call it um in your chest and it's like not a nice feeling so yeah and I get that after eating every time and sometimes it feels like I'm gonna literally throw my food up <laughs> but that started in week 23 and it wasn't too bad in week 23 but like each week it's gotten a little bit worse um but now it's kind of just like plateaued plateaued is that the word yeah anyway and um there's that so week 24 now I felt like this was so early and I kind of like was like what on earth when it happened when I was like laying in bed one night my breasts started leaking 
like milk. Obviously it's not milk yet. It's like watery and it's technically colostrum when it's like your first milk is called colostrum, but it's mostly just like water, you know, and it ha started happening in week 24. So around like the 2nd of September, I wrote on the 2nd of September, my breasts leaking OMGGGGG <laughs> and that's when it first happened and I was just like whoa this is so weird so I would wake up and like my pajamas would have like wet patches on either side and it mostly happens at night time um, when I went to my midwife appointments and like I told them I was like hey like you know my breasts are leaking they're like oh no it's completely that's great like good news like that means you know that you'll be able to breastfeed la 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 some women get it after they give birth and some women get it before so I'm just one of the women that get it before and kind of early I guess it can happen from week 20 they said but I got it in week 24 so there was that symptom in week 24 which was fun <laughs> it doesn't really happen during the day or like I found that if I'm wearing a bra it doesn't happen it's just like if I have my bra off um, sleeping you know what I mean like because no one wants to wear a bra <laughs> to sleep well I don't anyway oh by week 24 I started getting a lot more movement and started feeling like stronger kicks from the baby um, I started getting more stretching pain so like along the front of my belly there's a lot of stretching pain pelvic girdle pain and then this is when I oh that's right because this is when I went for my first big appointment um, I can't remember if it was week 23 or week 24 that I went for my first big appointment uh, at the hospital with my midwives where they would like was it then yeah where they like talked to me about everything and asked how I was feeling and I was like telling them everything that I've been feeling and things like that and I also got um, referred to go to the physio so I went to the physio for my back and the physio was basically just like you know stop taking the stairs at work because at work we have a lot of stairs and I was taking them for like exercise you know thinking like yeah this is great like exercise um, and that was what was causing a lot of my back pain and pelvic girdle pain. Um, so I stopped doing that and then as soon as I stopped walking the stairs every day at work, my back pain basically like went away like dramatically. It was still like, you know, I'd still get like a little bit of pain and pressure and things like that, but nowhere near as bad because I was like in so much pain that like I would come home from work, literally lay in the bed and I, I wouldn't get up because I was like in so much pain. I'd be like crying. It'd be horrible I'd be like telling my partner to get me like my wheat pack and heat the wheat pack up and just be like in terrible pain like it was so bad honestly like so bad I couldn't move every time I'd move or anything or even just laying still was hurting so it was like playing a big um, part in my everyday life so once the phys physiotherapist said to like She's like, stop walking the stairs. Um, and she gave me a bunch of other things to do, like exercises and some like belt and things like that. And that helped tremendously, like tremendously. So if you're having um, back pain, I'd recommend um, going to a physiotherapist or if you're in Australia, you can tell just the midwives um, or uh, I did it at my first obstetrics appointment, which was like the doctor, obst obstetrician. I told her like that I was having the back pain. And she referred me to the um, physiotherapist and I went at the hospital, it's free. So you just go to the physiotherapist, physiotherapy um, department in the hospital and it's literally all free, covered by Medicare. Thank you Australia for giving us free healthcare. Um, so that was great. So I went and did that. Um, Oh, and week 24 is when I started getting like my hands would tingle when I would wake up like feel numb kind of a little bit puffy uh, and this is like carpal tunnel I'm pretty sure this is carpal tunnel so I started getting that as well and then week 25 um, carpal tunnel got a little bit worse so like it would hurt to like you know like grab things and like putting pressure on like the hands like or wrist or whatever like opening a jar or like turning the shower tap on things like that like were hurting my hands and wrists and I'm pretty sure it's called carpal tunnel um that's something that you get in pregnancy which is so weird like <laughs> I was like what like why do I have this carpal tunnel but it's a thing so I had that so, yeah week 25 the baby was that started kicking a lot more 
Stronger kicks, which is fun. I absolutely love feeling the baby kicks. Like I would just literally sit there, lay down, hold my stomach and like feel the kicks. I honestly love it so much. Like I really, really love it. And like during the day you can feel kicking. And it's funny because like during the day I feel the kicks a lot higher up. Like I feel them like up here. And then at nighttime they're all down low and all to the left side most likely. Like generally speaking, he kicks a lot on the left side. Um, yeah, and I just love feeling it and it's so much fun, like, every time he kicks I'm like, telling Christian, like, my partner, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, oh my god, he's kicking, like, <laughs> it's so much fun, I love it, I don't know. And it's, it's like bonding, you know? Oh, week 25, I also had this tremendous leg cramp, so I was like obviously asleep in the middle of the night and I woke up at like 4 a.m. So I usually wake up for work anyway, around like 5.30, 5.45 for work. So this was like 4 or 4.30. I was woken up in the middle of the night for a leg cramp. Like just my leg, my calf muscle was like cramping so bad and I was just like, ah, start screaming. <laughs> and then my sleep and obviously like Christian woke up and he started like massaging my leg like and he could feel it. He could, he's like, oh my God, like I can feel the cramp. It's so strong. And then um, he like massaged it out or whatever. I don't know. I was just like, ah, <laughs> like, it was so painful to like wake you up. Like it's such a shock. And then um, eventually like it went away and then it was a bit hard to like get back to sleep after that. Cause I was like, oh my God, like scared it was going to come back again. <laughs> But yeah, went back to sleep, but that happens too. The midwives did warn me about that. They said like, you know, you can get leg cramps and things like that. Um, just like beware of it. It does happen. So yeah, I don't know how, why I got that because I was sleeping like on my left side, which they tell you you're supposed to sleep on your left side as you start getting a bit heavier now. Um, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I just got a leg cramp. Week 26 carpal tunnel kept going and back pain still that's pretty much like the main things and heartburn like now heartburn hasn't been it's like certain foods that trigger the heartburn uh it's like mexican spices like now i love mexican food generally but mexican spices and all like strong spices make it worse so i'm kind of like turned off by that now because i just i picture myself with heartburn after eating it so i'm kind of like yeah i don't really want to eat that like which is sad because i love my mexican food um all the way up until week 20 i hadn't yet gained any weight i think i gained like one kilo so I think you're supposed to gain like, I don't know, like three or four by that point or whatever it is, I don't remember. Depending on like your BMI and mine um, recommended was supposed to be around, I'd be around three or four kilos by that point. And now that I'm at 27 weeks, I've gained a total of four kilos and it's fine. Like honestly, my, my belly is growing. Like there's other ways to measure, measure that the baby is growing a healthy amount with the scans, with um, measuring your fundal height. So um, like I know everything's okay, but yeah, I just haven't really been gaining as much weight, which is kind of like great. But on the other hand, like um, I feel more like stretching in my stomach and stuff like that because it's just all there, like all, all the extra weight that I do have is just the baby. Like, honestly, it's so much. But um, if you're in like a similar situation or in the opposite situation where you're like gaining more than what you're supposed to or you're not gaining enough, like just obviously talk about it with your care team. If you're with midwives or if you're with like um, an OBGYN or whatever, whoever you're with, um, just talk to them about it. Like. And if they, you know, according to your scans and your fundal height and everything else, the baby looks like it's growing healthy, like there's nothing to worry about. And just like, do you like, as long as you're eating nutritious foods, that's the most important thing. That's what I just try to focus on, like just eat really well. And during this whole second trimester, I will say that my partner has been fantastic as well. Like always, he loves to cook me all my meals. So he always makes me like my breakfast he'll cut up fruit for me in the morning um he'll prepare my coffee and then like obviously the night before we like prepare our lunch before going to work the next day he makes me dinner like he's pretty good so pretty lucky but if you can get 
anyone to help you out if you're feeling like extra tired during pregnancy because it does take it out of you you are very tired all the time um then yeah like if someone can help you make meals like maybe if you've got like your mom or your dad or sisters brothers whoever like can maybe help you out a couple of days per week with cooking some meals and like putting them in the fridge and the freezer then I'd recommend doing that because anything you can do to try and get some extra rest in um, and not, you know, be standing there cooking. Because <laughs> that's, that's I know, what triggers my back pain is like if I'm standing for a long period of time, like standing and cooking or sitting and doing whatever, like my back is killing me. So, yeah, that's my recommendation. <laughs> Let's show the belly. And this is my belly at 27 weeks. <laughs> That is my 27 week belly. Um, he's growing nice and big. So I'm also thinking about doing a pregnancy must haves videos. Sort of the things that have helped me throughout my pregnancy with like my pain, heartburn, this and that, like tips, um, how I've helped with my hair falling out, things like that. If you'd like to see a video like that, just let me know by uh, liking this video. And I will be sure to do that video for you guys at the end of my pregnancy because I will summarize everything that I have used throughout my pregnancy for you guys. And if you've made it this far, make sure to subscribe to my video, uh, to subscribe to my channel because you're already here why not and you've obviously enjoyed it this far so thank you so much for watching i hope you have a fantastic day and we will see you in the next video bye ciao